hope you're okay and welcome back to my channel. So this video really wasn't planned tonight. I actually had a sponsored video content planned for tonight and it was in collaboration with like a sort of nutrition company that did like food and drinks. I filmed it today and the products were just absolutely awful. It was supposed to be like a review slash tasting video and I just sort of had high hopes for it because I've seen so many influencers talk about the brand so I was like it's going to be amazing and I tried the products and they was all absolute rubbish and I'm not about promoting things that I don't like basically if I don't like something I'm not going to promote it no matter how much I'm being paid but yeah I'm not one of these influencers that will see the pound signs and just do a video or talk about something because I'm getting money that is not my style and that's not something I'll ever do hence why I've now emailed the company and said I'm sorry not for me and yeah I've just turned it down and got no content for tonight so I've just last minute asked you guys to ask me some questions because I've never actually done like a sit down Q&A so I thought it'd be quite fun so I'm going to jump straight in and get to your questions. So first question is from Nat Shepherd, and she said how do you deal with negativity and how do you like to stay motivated? That's such a good question. Negativity is obviously something that you're always going to get. In life not everybody likes each other and that is absolutely fine i don't expect everybody to like me just as i don't like everybody that i watch on youtube or see or meet on a day-to-day -day basis that's just life everybody is different and that's the great thing about it however one thing I don't agree with is negativity. Like, I will never, ever, ever say anything negative to someone. If I don't like someone, for example, if I'm watching someone on YouTube, sorry, let me just turn this off. Let's say, for example, I don't like somebody that I watch on YouTube. If I find them annoying or they're not my sort of person, I simply won't watch them. That's just the be all and end of it. I won't watch them. I would never take the time to write a negative comment. And this is what I always, it always baffles me about negativity. I just think, why would you leave someone a negative comment? Why do you feel the need to be so mean to someone? Why do you feel the need to comment or pick someone's imperfection out or be horrible? I just don't understand that because that's just not how I'm brought up. That's just not how I am. And yeah, it always sort of baffles me. So I think to myself firstly, what sort of person is leaving negativity? Because if you're that sort of person that feels the need to, you know, put someone down and make someone feel like crap or be horrible to someone in any sort of way, then to me, they're just not a normal person because I just don't know what normal person would take time out of their day to do that. So that's what I always sort of think when I get negativity. If ever I get someone that's like picking something out of my appearance or saying something like mean about myself, I just think it's quite sad to be honest with you because I know for myself, I would never want to make someone feel upset or hurt someone's feelings at all. So to me, it's like what sort of person would want to put someone down and make them upset? To me, it's normally like a bully or just someone that's got a lot of issues with themselves, not happy with themselves, and, you know, obviously got a lot of spare time as well. So dealing with negativity, I just sort of ignore it because I just think the people that are writing it have obviously got something going on with their life that is that bad that they're having to bash someone else. So that's that question. And obviously the second part of the question was how do you like to stay motivated? So personally, I just believe motivation is like the key to success. If you're not motivated, then it's hard to sort of like be successful because motivation like goes with so many things like organisation, positivity. It's all like one category in my eyes. So to stay motivated, what I like to do is read. I've only just started doing this like in the last month and honestly it is helping me so much. So I like to read a lot of motivational books. I'm reading um, two books at the moment by Sarah Knight. I think it's something like um, how to get shit done or keep your shit together but something like that I heard titles are very like um, you know what I mean like quite ballsy and stuff and then the other one is like you do you um, and they're just about like how to stay focused and not to like let other people's opinions bother you and how to like be successful they're really good and there's a few other like books on my list as well that I really want to get my hands on and read so I definitely think like a lot of mindset training like reading books keeps you motivated also I find another thing that keeps me motivated is like having my eye on my goals knowing what goals I want to achieve knowing what goals I want to hit so I always like to make a sort of like list of what I want to achieve in the year and always sort of look at them and remind myself of them and just aim for them and um, like I said we always have down days but it's just snapping out of that and getting your mentality to not have those down days so like I said reading is key 
definitely read them. Okay, so the next question I've got is from Paula, and she says, why did you decide to join New Skin? How can you tell it's not a scam? I've been offered to work for this company a few times and still feel so skeptical about it. Okay, I get so many questions about this. I think I might just do like a whole video about New Skin if that's something you want to see. So let me know and I'll happily do that. I am like every probably other girl that's sitting watching this video. I used to get so many emails about New Skin. I didn't know it was New Skin at the time. All I know is I used to get a lot of emails about, hey, um, I've got a free opportunity. I think you'd be really good at it. Like, do you want to join my free opportunity? You can earn like extra cash and this can be a full-time job. And for me, their emails are spammy. Like, they're so spammy and that is not going to draw me into working for a company because... I don't know, I just, to me, I just don't like that, I just didn't like that, and I just didn't get it, and I didn't even open my eyes to it, and that was simply the end of it, I just was like, what is this? And in the sort of, like, same breath as that, when I used to see, like, the products, um, on people's, like, Instagram and Facebook, and I used to get invited to, like, a lot of Facebook groups with all these products in, and the first thing I remember seeing was the tooth whitening paste, and I was just like really who is selling tooth whitening toothpaste like toothpaste toothpaste i can't even speak like why would you want to sell toothpaste and then they're going on like they're earning millions of pounds and i'd be like you're selling toothpaste how are you clearly not making millions of pounds it's all just a scam and i feel like sometimes because people try and really blow it up like it just seems so scammy so what changed my mind about the business is you guys may or may not know but my upline is taylor blue so taylor actually owned a successful company previous to doing new skin she actually walked away from that company because she wasn't happy and she's now doing this full time. Obviously, going from a successful company to doing this full time, well, new skin, not YouTube. Obviously, I follow her and I was thinking, hang on a minute, like, she had such a successful company. Like, if this was a scam, this email thing that I always get emailed about, why would she be doing it? Like... She wouldn't be doing it if it was not legit. Um, you know, I've always trusted her opinions and stuff, so I just I just knew that it was it would be legit if she's doing it. So yeah, to sort of cut it short, I just opened my mind to it, um, actually spoke to someone about it, learnt about the company, learnt about the business, and realised that actually it is an amazing opportunity. There is so much potential to grow in the business. There's not many businesses where you can grow and earn the pay scale that you can in this business. You know, it's not a get rich quick scheme. You don't just walk into the business and reach the top of the company's compensation plan overnight. It's not like that. But the potential is there and the opportunity is there. And that's what I just love about the business. I love a challenge. I love doing something new. Yes, I absolutely love doing YouTube and this is my full-time career and something that I love doing and I very much want my YouTube to grow so I'll never sort of leave YouTube or take a step back on YouTube. Obviously, new skin is just purely something I'm doing on the side, something else to get my teeth stuck into, something else to do and blossom with that, hopefully. And yeah, not forgetting, one of the main reasons that I actually joined new skin was I actually love the products. You gals know me. I will never be a part of something I don't like believing, like the products. I just won't. I get so many emails on a daily basis to do sponsored videos with brands and the, the moment I try a product and I don't like it, that's it. I'm not, I just took, leave it and I won't do it because I'm not going to sit and advertise anything to you guys that I don't personally use, like or believe in. And yeah, so I use the chemical peel, I use the face mask, I use a lip plumping balm, I even use the toothpaste, funnily enough. If you have any more questions, then just feel free to email me, by the way, because there's so much I could say about new skin, but I don't want to make this video all about new skin. So, yeah. Okay, so the next question I've been asked is from Ashley, I think her name is. Um, and she says, can I just say you've been killing it lately? Oh, thank you. Um, um, but I'd love to know what's the next goal that you have set yourself, big or small? I would say my next goal is to hit 100k on YouTube. So I know that's quite a big goal, but it's definitely something that I really want to try and achieve this year. I know that probably sounds crazy because I'm only on 40k, well, just over 40k at the moment, but... I just think why not like if you set your eyes on something you set your heart on something and you make a little plan of how to get there then why not like always dream big never like lower your you know goals if you want to reach something then put that goal there but then you obviously you need to put the work in to get to that goal so 100k by the end of year would be an absolute dream and definitely something that I really want to do and um, also I think like with new skin I want to obviously get to my next promotion in that um, that would be amazing. Goals away from career is like 
I really want to get a house like that's something that is really high upon my list obviously being self-employed now has made that much more harder and um, so I don't know like how quick or when I'm going to be able to do that my own place is definitely a goal that I have so whenever I achieve that I don't know but that is something I want to do and I'm saving so yeah so my next question is from I can't see her name is it Emily I think it's Emily and she said how long did it take you to reach a thousand subs how quickly did your channel grow that's a really good question so you guys may know that I actually did YouTube way back in the day like when I was 16 and no one did YouTube so I actually had a channel then and I did really well with my channel I had quite a few thousand subscribers then um, but I packed it in and deleted that channel and that was that so I think for me hitting my first thousand was quite easy because when I um, restarted my channel a lot of people found me from like back in the day when I did it when I was 16. So I started my channel back up when I think I was about 23, so about two years ago now. So I've been doing YouTube for two years. See, I've only really started doing it properly in the last year, I would say. And it was only until November that I quit my job and actually started doing it full time. So obviously dedicating full time like effort into doing YouTube. Whereas before it was just like bits and bobs at the weekend, maybe two videos a month or something. So yeah, I've been doing YouTube for back two years now for me it didn't really take me that long personally to hit a thousand just because like i said i'd done youtube before and i found that a lot of people found me you can't really say when are you going to hit a thousand but what my main tips would be is if you're trying to hit a thousand is be consistent have good content don't give up okay so moving on to the next question the next question is from lucy everson i think and um, so she says hi i've got a question for you what ring light do you use when did you first start youtube did you start off with little subscribers or did they all come at once that's a really good question as well so ring light i don't actually use a ring light currently i've just got a soft box i brought these from ebay i believe they're around about 40 pound for two i think i actually broke my ring light and have not yet replaced it i've not actually found that i need it but saying that the soft boxes are so bulky so i definitely am going to pick up another ring light just because ring lights are obviously just more slimmer and don't take up so much room like soft boxes do but if you um, are like wanting some sort of lighting and can't afford a ring light because i know ring lights can be like 100 pound plus soft boxes are a cheap alternative so yeah that's an alternative um when did you first start youtube so i've just answered this but it was about two years ago i'm gonna say didn't really do a lot but i set my channel up then and did you start off with little subscribers or did they all come at once um they didn't all just come at once it is something that obviously has grown but i did have a fair few at the beginning like i said i probably had a thousand after maybe two two months or something just because i had people that knew me before and found my channel um, but yeah it's, it is something that I've just grown it's something that you know has took me like I said a couple of years to build and be at this point of 40k so yeah there is no quick recipe to get subscribers of YouTube it simply is good content and you know you've got to have like I'm not saying that I've got a good personality but you have got to be someone that people can relate to you've got to have like something about yourself you can't just be you know like oh, hi do you know what I mean you've got to you've got to have a bit of personality like that's not trying to blow my own trumpet because I feel like that does but it's not you just got to have something about yourself because I get so many questions like oh my YouTube won't take off and oh you've just been lucky and all this and then I watch their channel and I just think first of all they're sitting like doing their video and they've got everybody in the background people walking through they're talking to people halfway through it's like really dark I can't even see them um they're like do you know what I mean nothing's coming across on the camera so yeah I'd say you know just be yourself but also shine your personality through because people at the end of the day are watching you and they want to relate to you and they want to like you so you have to bring that to the camera I think. Okay next question is from miss underscore safe and she says if you could only shop at one clothing shop the rest of your life where would it be and that for me is so easy to answer and it is without a doubt pretty little thing. I'm so lucky that I obviously get to work with pretty little thing and get kindly gifted things with them on a regular basis which just blows my mind because I've always shopped a pretty little thing since day one so to have a relationship with a brand I've always loved is just insane and it still blows my mind every single day but yeah they're my favourite online store but if I had to say a non-online store it would definitely be Primark. The next question I've got is from I think it's M underscore K-O-Y and she just says why did you and your long term boyfriend break up? I'm honestly not really going to go into this a lot. Um, you guys will probably 
have, no, like, thanks for the question. I don't want that to seem negative at all. Like, thank you so much for the question. And I can understand that a lot of you do want to know about this because I've had so many questions to do a video on my breakup and just loads, loads, loads of questions because obviously I understand that, you know, me putting myself on the internet, you are going to be wondering why we broke up because obviously we was together for seven and a half years and that's a long time and I, I get that you guys want answers and want to know what happened. Like, I completely understand because if I was a viewer, I would want to know as well but it's just not something that I really felt ready to speak about yet and that I want to speak about. So I'm going to sort of answer it a little bit. I broke up with him. I wanted things that he didn't basically. I wanted next steps he didn't want them and um, essentially I, I just became really unhappy and miserable in the relationship because I'd been wanting them for so long and I wasn't getting them and we broke up previously in the October like last not last year the year before because of it and um, got back together and nothing really changed and yeah it was just draining me to be honest with you because it, it felt really hard because it was like I loved him and I felt like he was my best friend and everything but then nothing was moving in the relationship I was getting older nothing was happening I was just becoming more and more miserable so as hard as it seemed I had to break up with him and yeah it was massively hard of course like splitting up with someone when you've been with him for seven and a half years is so so hard and um, so yeah, I'm not even going to speak any more about that than that, really. Um, but, yeah, he's moved on now. He's got a girlfriend. He's madly in love with her. So, yeah, it's just one of those things in life, isn't it? So, that's to answer that question. Also, the second part of that question is, is there any travel vlogs coming the way? Coming the way? Coming your way? Uh, yes. I'm going to Venice this weekend. I'm going to Venice on Sunday till Tuesday. I've been to Venice before um, with my ex. You've probably seen that travel vlog, but I've actually privatised it now because I just want all of that stuff privated. Um, so yeah, I'm looking forward to making new memories at Venice. I'm really excited to go back. It will be really nice. I love Venice. So I'm going there. I'm also looking at going to Santorini in the next few months. That will be very exciting. I really want to go Rome as well this year. So yeah, there will be plenty more travel vlogs coming up. I've also had a message from Emily Johnson saying what are your tips for when you're free feeling lonely and being newly single oh, I feel like I'm the expert at answering this question inevitably when you break up with someone you are going to feel lonely you're going to feel down you're going to feel depressed you're going to feel sad you're going to feel a mix of emotions anger hatred like there's so many emotions you're going to go through believe me but I feel like reading, reading like takes your mind off everything read motivation books read positivity books like read books books are like the answer to everything I always feel like when I read a good book it takes you away from like life and really helps you especially like motivational books anything you can just to try and take your mind off it I know that obviously your mind wanders and there are going to be times where you're laying in bed upset and you know that that, that is just inevitable that's just going to happen there is going to be times where you're thinking about it but just keeping busy is like the main thing if that's you needing to go out with your friends or go for coffee or do whatever then do that but I would say just try and keep busy, try and write a list of goals of things that you want to start achieving and ways to move forward with your life and that will help you as well, like just focusing on that. So find something else to focus on, like set your mind on that and just try and move forward and don't look back. That bit. Easier said than done, I know. Um, but yeah, I know it's so easy like to feel lonely when you've obviously just come through a breakup because you're so used to having someone there like 24 seven then to not have them there, it's obviously a massive shock to the system. So just try and like, you know, even if it's your mom or like if you've got a best friend, like try and spend a lot of time with them. Just try and, like I said, spend time with people, keep busy and then just do like your favorite things, i.e. Like reading, YouTube, watching maybe a box set anything like that you just need to try, sort of like take your mind off things keep busy and look forward to the future and think of new goals new things that you want to do and really focus all your energy on that and yeah i think time is like the essence like everything gets better with time okay so the next question is do i have a partner now wouldn't you all like to know i honestly like at the moment i'm just happy and enjoying life and enjoying traveling and yeah that's all you guys need to know for the moment um i'm sorry like i'm sorry i'm not talking more i just yeah like when the time is ready i will reveal and talk to you more about all of that sort of stuff um favorite restaurant in leicester i said this is my favorites but i don't really have a favorite restaurant in leicester um so yeah i'm sorry to bore you all but i just i just don't so Sarah Thompson says, how is your love life and friendships with you now concentrating on YouTube? Um, so obviously um, friendships, 
not really changed really um obviously i'm free a lot more so i can sort of go for lunch dates and things a lot more now that i'm obviously self-employed working for myself but then at the same time i feel like you do lose touch with a lot of friendships that you make at work or you realize what friendships really were friendships at work maybe like when you're at work you're in a bubble of like work relationships and work friendships and you think that your work friends are your real friends but when you leave work you actually realize that they were just work colleagues and i think that's something that i've really found so true like there's a lot of people at work that i thought i'd stay in touch with and nothing but yeah i definitely feel like when you leave work you do realize what friendships of those that you made of work at work were real friendships and what were just really work relationships and friendships um so yeah like that's one thing i would say i like learned sort of since I've been self-employed um, from sort of like work friendships. Okay, so the next question I have had asked is from Natalie Ball and she says, where do you see yourself in 10 years time in relation to YouTube, your business and social media? I absolutely love this question, Natalie. And honestly, 10 years time in YouTube, business and social media. So 10 years time, I'd like to think that I have a kid. I like to hope <laughs> um, that maybe I'm married and I've got a kid and I'm settled and got a house so that would obviously be the ideal goal. Um, in relation to YouTube, I would love to be by that point really established on YouTube, you know, have a substantial following. Um, obviously I'd be a bit of like a mommy blogger then, hopefully, you know, if I've got kids and stuff, I'd obviously incorporate a lot more sort of like mum and lifestyle videos on my channel. So I think in terms of YouTube, that's sort of how my channel will develop as I get older. Obviously, as I'm a mum and as I've got my own home and things, like obviously my channel will develop into like more housey videos and interior, because I love interior guys, I'm obsessed with interior. And um, yeah, like, you know, videos around my children and stuff, like that's where I see my YouTube channel going. Obviously I'll always do fashion, I would do like fashion for young and old and whatever, like fashion will always be there. And maybe a little bit of makeup thrown in for good measure. That's how I see my YouTube channel going. Where I'd like to see my YouTube going, hopefully I'm still doing it in 10 years, you just never know in this industry. Um, my business, obviously to reach the top of the compensation plan within 10 years, would be insane would absolutely love that but you know it is hard work and nothing comes easy so we can dream and we can think about these sort of goals but it's actually achieving them so yeah I'd love to I'd love my business to be flourished then and you know really have a really good team under me and also I think to see my team doing well under me like to have some really strong people in my team and see them benefit and getting you know a lot out of the business that would be amazing because I love seeing other people do well that genuinely is something that is really important to me I love seeing other people do well because it makes me happy seeing good things come to other people that put the work in and you know all that sort of thing I mean if we're talking in general with like YouTube and career goals for the next 10 years I would love to have my own book that is always something I wanted my own book it would be about like bullying and how I've got this far like I know like I've not got that far but I feel like I have a story like up until this point in my life like I feel like so much has gone on in my life like being bullied obviously my mum going through cancer um you know like just I feel like there's been so much like friendships like losing friendships and you know having no one feeling alone to obviously losing my auntie as well you know just losing people in your life like I feel like I've experienced quite a lot already and I feel like I could make such a good book and share some good advice as well so I'd love to do a book that's like something I really want to do and I would also love to have my own range in Primark that would be an absolute dream like my own clothing range in Primark that would just, I mean, that probably isn't going to happen, but a gal can dream, a gal can dream. Okay, so I've got two more questions left. So the next question is the best cocktail bars in Leicester. Okay, so Leicester isn't that great for cocktail bars, I'm going to be quite honest. Um, but the places that I normally go, so first of all, I normally just start off at Turtle Bay because it's two for one, and I mean, who doesn't love two for one? So yeah, I, and I do actually like the cocktails in Turtle Bay, I'm going to be quite honest, I really do enjoy the cocktails. So Turtle Bay is always good, um, two for one finishes at seven, and then it's on again 10 till 12, so I'd always start there for a few cocktails. I then probably make my way over to Cozy Club. Honestly, I feel like the cocktails aren't that great in Cozy Club, but it's just local, so I normally like work my way around there. Um, there's then that one on Kank Street, is it like 44 Kank Street? That could be completely wrong, but they do like really nice cocktails with like candy floss on the side and stuff, so that's like somewhere different to go. In that area as well, there's one that I recently found um, around St. Martin's Square called 44, let me just have a look. 
no not 44 it's called the bottle garden I don't know where 44 come from the bottle gardens that's st martin square area in leicester and that's a really nice like cocktail place and really upmarket i would say and you don't get all like your rowdy people in there if you just want to go for a few nice drinks with the girls really nice in there they've got like a um tree with like fairy lights on and stuff as well which is really cute well yeah, like a little bit of a tree. It's not like your tattoo restaurant tree, which is all like lavish, but it's a tree with fairy lights on, so yeah. Oh, Las Iguanas do like two for one cocktails as well, <laughs> if you want the two for one. There's also a place called Manhattan. Don't know if you've ever been there. Um, that's quite nice for cocktails. Again, it's more like a bit of an upmarket crowd. How are your dental bonding veneers? Can you still eat everything with them? P.S. They look amazing. Much love. That's from Holly McAllister. Um, yeah, dental bonding veneers. So far, so good. Um, I have actually chipped one. You can't actually tell. Like, look, you can't even tell. There's not a chip in the tooth. Basically, what it is a very tiny bit of the coating um, which the teeth is coated with has like chipped off only tiny like when I talk tiny not even half a pea like a quarter of a pea um, so yeah it's really minute and like I said like you guys won't even be able to see um, it's you really do have to point it out but I know how I did it I had my phone on like my chest once well not once about a few weeks ago and I knocked my phone up and it smacked me right in the front teeth and as soon as I did it I thought my teeth are gonna fall out I honestly was expecting to look in the mirror and my teeth not be there that's how like much it hurt and yeah it did chip slightly a little bit of the coating so my teeth are still fine it's not like chipped away at any of the teeth it's just chipped a tiny bit of the coating off so I'm gonna go and get that fixed but yeah other than that they are really good you can eat everything as normal obviously you can't eat like toffees and really chewy and hard things I, I would say be careful you probably can but I just avoid things like that because I just don't want to damage them in any way really so yeah I really do avoid like really hard crunchy foods and um yeah like toffees and things like that not saying you can't eat them, I know people that bite into apples and everything with veneers because you, you can, but I just avoid doing that because I want to look after them and I don't want any damages. So yeah, they're just like normal teeth really and they feel fine now, they feel like my own teeth because for a while they didn't feel like my own teeth. I honestly felt like I had false teeth in my mouth, it was such a weird feeling, but yeah. Everything's great now. I'm so happy I got them done. Best decision I ever made. Um, I'll leave Dr. McLean's details in the description, but I have done a whole video on dental bonding if you do want to know about what I had done in the procedure. So I'll link that video in the description bar as well, so go and check that out. But yeah, amazing. Best decision. If you're thinking about it, just get it done because once you get it done, you'll be like, why did I wait so long? Like, it's life-changing. So yeah, happy with them. Um, it's a girl called Tilly who's asked a question, nearly forgot. She said, who's your favorite YouTuber? And another question, vlogs or main channel videos, what do you prefer to watch? Um, favorite YouTuber, I watch a lot of YouTubers, admittedly. So who are my favorite people? My favorite people is like um, Samantha Maria, who's formerly called like Beauty Crush. Watched her since day one, absolutely love her. Always love tuning into her videos. Um, I like Sabrina's videos. Um, I'll leave all these usernames inscription bars just in case you don't know who I'm talking about. I absolutely love Lydia Millen's videos. I've been following Lydia since day one, brunette days, when she was just doing vlogging and didn't even do YouTube. I honestly like have followed Lydia's life so I feel like I really do relate to her because I've watched her for so long. Well not even watched her, I used to read her blog like back in the day so I absolutely love watching her channel because I just feel like yeah, I just feel really proud, like, do you know when you just feel like you really know someone? I feel, I guess everybody feels like that when they watch YouTube, like, you actually feel like you know the person talking, it's so strange. But yeah, I love Lydia's videos, I feel like they're really easy to watch. I'm actually just looking on YouTube just to um, remember who I watch, because there's so many people, honestly, I watch so many people on YouTube, so I'm going to try and leave a little list of, like, my top ten favourite people, just to name a couple of other people. Madison Sarah, I've been watching her a lot lately, love her, she's like a newbie person I've been watching. Um, who else? Holly Boone, I watch her quite a lot. Um, oh, Hannah Rene, love her for makeup videos as well. Um, Coco Boo T, she doesn't upload that often, but when she does, love her videos. I like her style. Um, who else do we have? Um, Lucy Carter and obviously her sister Elle, love them too. They're really good, love their videos. There's so many guys, I could be here all day, so like I said, I'm just gonna list a few of my favorites in the description bar below. 
and I like watching a combination of both things to be honest with you I think I do love vlogs I find that like when I'm getting ready in the morning I watch a lot of vlogs because they're just really easy to watch so I'm definitely going to start doing more vlogs because I know you guys like them as well um, but I love watching main channel videos as well I love watching Primark hauls, fashion videos, makeup tutorials you name it I watch a lot of things so yeah I just watch anything I'm just addicted to YouTube to be honest with you thank you to everybody that did send me over a question I really do appreciate you taking out your time to write me a question and yeah, there's going to be a lot of good content out this week, so keep your eyes peeled for that. It's going to be a pretty little thing haul, a Primark haul, and a few other things. So yeah, keep your eyes peeled. But I really hope you have enjoyed this video. I feel like these videos are so personal and you get to know people a bit more, so hopefully it's been fun. If you have enjoyed it, then please give it a big thumbs up. Remember to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. I also do have a giveaway on my channel, not my channel, my Instagram that I'm running at the moment. Um, so definitely go and check that out. You could win basically a foundation, a primer and my favorite highlighter and a skinny dip makeup bag to put those in so yeah it's a really good giveaway honestly it's Laura Mercier primer Giorgio Armani foundation and the doll beauty highlighter they're like three of my favorite face products at the moment so yeah because I hit 40k guys I just want to give something back to you I wish I could give every single one of you something but obviously I can't so yeah I was sort of thinking what can I give away and I just thought you know what I'm really enjoying these products at the moment so gonna give those away obviously the foundation will be in your shade like I'm not obviously gonna give you the foundation in my shade so yeah I'll let you pick your shade the foundation so yeah definitely make sure you enter that all you need to do is be following me on my YouTube follow me on Instagram and just tag one of your friends on the picture that you'll see on my Instagram so yeah I hope you're all okay and I shall see you in my next video bye, -bye.